Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video I want to cover my guide for Spire of the Watcher. This is the new dungeon from Season 19, Season of the Seraph, and I want to give you a couple tips about this one before we even get started, because it is 1570 recommended, but the middle boss fight, I would have to guess, is probably 1580, and I know the final boss fight is 1590. So, while we are early in the season, it is going to feel tougher early in the season, being 1592, with, you know, 1581 for gear score, my weapons only being 1580, and yet the boss is 1590, things are gonna take a little longer. DPS is gonna take more phases, I'm gonna take more damage. That's why my build is all about survival. That doesn't mean there are like tons of other builds. A Warlock build with fusion grenades where you can nuke a final boss. A Titan build with Lorely Splendor and Sunspots and the ability just to stay alive and cook everything with Sunspots on the ground. Hunters. The fact that you guys can go invisible is going to be very helpful in certain situations in this dungeon. Your new arc super where you throw your pole and it just sticks into a boss. These bosses move and that thing can do damage the entire time. There's a lot of loadouts for everybody. And what I'm trying to get at here is my goal with this guide is to show you the tools that I used. And then hopefully you guys can get the idea of what to expect in the dungeon and then build yourself a loadout that works for you. But before we get going, um, one thing you guys can do, these guides do take a lot to put together. So this is a sponsored video. And if you guys will watch this ad and click the link in the description, that's the best way to support the channel on this one. So now a quick word from today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. We've all been there. Waiting room at the doctor's office. Movie hasn't started yet. Or just can't fall asleep. You know what you have in all those places? Your phone. So why don't you download Raid Shadow Legends right now and get started leveling up your team of champions so next time you're waiting for the show to start, you can just jump back into the campaign or maybe go find a dungeon boss to help level up your characters. And no game is great without an end game level challenge. Enter the Doom Tower. This huge tower is really a prison full of some nasty enemies. While the lower levels may not seem that difficult at first, the higher you climb, the more specialized and serious these bosses get. Ignoring debuffs, draining turn meters, and crazy health bars are just some of the challenges you'll face in this super tough content. Trust me when I say you'll have to do some experimentation to figure out some of these fights. And speaking of fights, Raid's got something special happening right now. They released a legendary champion based off MMA and pro wrestling legend, Ronda Rousey. Yes, THE Ronda Rousey. You can get Ronda free right now, whether you're a new or longtime player, just by logging into Raid. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for the next seven days between now and February 20th, and Ronda's yours. Brand new and current users can also use promo code RAIDRONDA right here in-game and get all these goodies like XP boosts, energy refills, and 500,000 silver. Also, if you have Amazon Prime, make sure you get your exclusive rewards over on Prime Gaming right now. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet for some reason, Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and you'll get bonuses worth $30, a free Epic Champion Vergus, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon your own champion as soon as you log in. All of this will be waiting for you in your inbox right here on the home screen. Remember, this is only for new players for the next 30 days, but once you're in game, look me up under Ebontis, and if there's still space in my clan, you can join. I'll see you in Tularia and good luck. All right, so let's talk about my loadout and just kind of explain why I've got it. First, I'm going to go over kind of just armor and stats. So I'm going 100 resilience for PvE. It's just very important to try and stay alive and have the most damage mitigation possible. For further damage mitigation, most things in this damn entire dungeon are going to be void. So void is going to be a very important thing. Things do want to get close, give you a hug, and explode or punch you. So melee damage resistance keeps you know your damage reduced by 25% for things that are point-blank range. Only during the mid boss fight do I switch to double void, just because there's a lot of things that are void that are trying to hit you. Other than that, I basically run like this the entire time. Now my build is around making orbs with light to help me stay alive, help me proc devour, and then also just kind of have a hope to stay alive in a pinch type situation. So, depending on what part of the phase I am in, when I'm running my most of the dungeon up until the final boss fight, I'm running Kinetic Siphon. Now you could probably switch this out for something, but Kinetic Siphon, Rapid Kinetic Final Blows Crate, or Orbs of Power. I'm using uh, Osteostriga, which this works really well, so I'm picking up orbs all the time. I also have Protective Light. Not the best thing anymore, but when you're charged with light, you have that little instance where if you get damaged a lot, it's going to help keep you alive, and I'm charged with light all the time, so I may as well. Since I'm going charged with light, not really doing a whole lot with Elemental Wells. Taking Charge, obviously picking up. 
orbs, helps me be charged with light. Whatever part of the dungeon that you're on, it's a good way to make sure you have fast reloads. Other than that, I'm all about the resilience. High energy fire, again, I'm going to be charged with light all the time, so I may as well just get bonus damage pretty much the entire way through. Here, I've got stacks on stacks. Every time I pick up an orb, technically it counts for two. So whether it's protective light having a double stack, whether it's trying to kill more enemies with bonus damage, all of this is basically allowing me to stay alive and be charged with light as much as possible. Also, when the, you're in the final boss room, Grenade Launcher Scavenger is basically going to be a must because the ammo and heavy ammo is a struggle for me. Linear, not so bad. But again, heavy ammo in the final boss room especially was a struggle. But make sure you have your scavengers on because whatever you're running for DPS, it sucks to go ammo farming. And I had to definitely do that at times. So try and make that as best as possible. Finally, the two big mods. We've got all about your damage. Solo operative this season, plus 15% when you are alone to all the damage you output. This is good for every subclass and everything that you're going to do. Even if I pop my bubble, I only have that for a little bit of time, maybe while I'm doing a boss fight. Everything else that I'm doing, this is still active. So this is still very, very good just to do more damage all the time, especially when you're under leveled. Now, the other one that goes with it is weak and clear. Grenade launchers, when you damage a boss, a champion, or break a shield, it allows them to take 15% more damage. So you do 15% more, and they take 15% more. It's a nice combination for at least getting decent DPS as a solo player. My build, um, I'm going throwing shield, just because you don't want to get too close to quite a few things in this dungeon. Vortex grenades to kind of pull everything, especially because I'm going to use Wither Horde. We'll get to that. Uh, I'm running Bastion and Offensive Bulwark, pretty much everything to get me an overshield I can. Overshields got buffed. Now they do like a 50% damage mitigation of the overshield, so it's just a stronger overshield. And then, as I said, I went Devour. Picking up an orb grants Devour. I'm making orbs all over the place, so I honestly can have Devour procced quite frequently. Now, Warlocks have different ways to get this, but as a Titan, this is actually really nice to have up a lot of the time. Now, I also did my melee final blow start health regeneration. I don't love this is this is kind of like it not the best choice, but it's 10 resilience, so it kind of gives you a little more stack flexibility. And for my melee shield throw, sometimes I do kill stuff. So getting a little health regeneration when I do that, I'm gonna take it. Finally, having overshield and devour last longer while it takes away the resilience, this is a nice way to cancel it. Those two lasting longer is big because the longer devour lasts, the longer overshield lasts, the better. And then of course bubble for Basically, I use my bubble for super damage, for boss damage, and that's mostly it. Now, for weapons, as I said, I'm using Osteostriga to kill lots of adds. They're in groups. They're kind of clumped together all the time, and you can also overfill your ammo, so you can have like 100 bullets. It actually helps on the middle boss. You'll see why, because it's basically the Garden of Salvation middle boss, and you have to shoot a bunch of red eyes. Now, you could probably do this with a submachine gun as well and just be able to hit crits and make it work. But for this one, I can have like 100 bullets in the submachine gun and it works pretty well. Uh, I paired that with Salvager Salvo. Now, I did Demolitionist and Chain Reaction. You could probably have a better loadout between the perks, but that's what I ran. Allowed me to get um, basically weakened clear on anything I needed it to. And then finally, Taipan for the damage on the boss, especially Triple Tap and Focused Fury. Not firing line, you're by yourself, you're going to get nothing. And Frenzy takes too long to proc, and sometimes it just doesn't count. Focus Fury, you hit three shots, and you're getting 20% more damage for 12 seconds if you go enhanced. It's 11 seconds if it's only regular, so don't worry if it's regular. It's still pretty damn solid. Now, for the final boss, I swapped a Wither Horde, Funnel Web, and this is where everybody's probably going to have their debate. Now... Is an interference grenade launcher amazing? It's fine. I have field prep so I can reload faster. I have spike grenades so I can have more direct hit damage. Now I have full court. The final boss especially is where I use this one because he starts farther away and then slowly walks towards you. So I get a little extra bonus damage. But honestly, it's not going to be that much. You could probably do just as well with Tarnation. Especially if you could go enhanced field prep, say enhanced chain reaction. Both of those are going to give you reserves. Theoretically hold more rounds You can go up to seven here. Maybe with those you could go eight and it's rapid fire frame deep ammo reserves You can just dump grenades on that guy with tarnation That's another option to consider as well now. I did boss spec so the actual grenades hit faster, but either way That's an option if you've got a clown cartridge vorpal hothead god roll yeah, that's probably gonna outdo anything that I throw at it as a basic grenade launcher roll because you're firing two rockets that have clown cartridge. That's how you get the two. Vorpal for 10%. Boss spec for 7 more percent. 
And it's a rocket. They travel and you can hit them from almost even farther back in the room. So that's going to be your god roll. I tried with a Code Duello. I could not hit my crits with Linear Fusion on a consistent basis. So this was my choice. Now, if you want to run other things, you probably can try them. But between grenade launchers and rocket launchers, and even like missing some shots with the Linear, I always ended up somewhere in the 500 to 600,000 range. And he's got 5.6 million health. Now, if I'm efficient with Wither Horde, I could get it probably down to about 8 damage phases on the final boss. But honestly, it ended up being about 10 or 11. It's an endurance fight, and there's no question about it. So that's my loadout, and that's the why to my loadout. Hopefully that helps and gives you an understanding as to why. Lorely Splendor and a Sunbreaker. Absolutely viable. At some point, I'll have to try Arc and see if that's even an option with, like, Storm Grenades roaming around. And maybe a good Thunder Crash. Like, there's a lot of different options you're going to be able to try in here. And every subclass, every class is going to have some options that work. I just want to show you guys what worked for me and why it worked. So that's why I set it up this way. So hopefully that makes sense. And at this point, I want to jump in. I'm going to have timestamps throughout this entire dungeon. So if you guys want to jump to a certain section and see, like, the setup explanation. Or you just want to skip ahead to the gameplay because there's some mechanics I explain at certain points. Timestamps are going to be there all the way through. I've also got the collectibles and the two hidden chests in here as well. So you guys can find those on top of that. That being said, let's jump in the dungeon and we'll get things going. All right, so when you get going, we are on Mars and kind of one of those like rips or breaks in time that we're in. So Ishtar, chronoscopic analysis, whatever you want to call this thing. It's a temporal disturbance. That's probably the best word for it. So this is one of those cool dungeons where you can actually see from where you start where you're going to be going. So we're actually going to end up up there for one of the boss fights. We're going to be down in the spire later on. So we're going over there. We just got to kind of get there first. So first thing we've got is our encounter and the explanation. See this wire to my left? It's kind of a main theme of the entire dungeon. It's probably a nice little tease that they show you the wire all the way through. So let me get up here and I'll show you too. What I'm going to do is I'll give you a kind of a brief explanation of how it works. Go through a run. And then I'm going to trace all the wires so you guys can see how they all work. And that'll probably mean a little bit more in a second. All right, so this is the opening encounter. The way this whole dungeon works is you're basically trying to connect wires from starting point of like the electricity to the ending point where it wants to go. The way you can do that is when you see a Minotaur, you kill the Minotaur, you get a buff called Arctrician. Arctrician allows you to basically activate the points along the way. And... Those points are the things that you need to shoot to be, base, to be able to basically complete the full connection. You got to shoot them in order. Now, granted, if there's two that are right next to each other and you shoot them out of order, but you do it quick, you can technically proc both of them. But generally, you need to shoot them in order. But if you hit two like really close together, even though they're backwards order, it'll still count because um, they kind of like have a temporary proc. Now, basically, what I'm talking about is these guys right here, the yellow wires. You can see them hanging over the edge, hanging off the edge of the building all along the ground over there behind the goblin. And there are four starting points of which you can't see, but the four ending points are all sitting out there in that little node right there. Now there's two in the front and two in the back. The two front nodes connect to wires that are all on the ground level and they're inside the buildings on ground level. The two in the back connect to upper level wires like 95% of the way through. So most of them are pretty easy to theme. The one on the right, like front right is all in he interior on the right building. Front left, left interior. Back left, roofs. Back right, roofs. Uh, the one thing to know about this encounter is you're going to have Cyclops that spawn up top. My advice, come in here with full ammo. So if you got to go hit a rally flag on another planet, do it. Four Cyclops up top. One's behind that spire over there. At least make sure you kill the three that you can see when you start. You're also going to have a Minotaur that spawns in front of you as soon as that guy dies. So if you kill the Minotaur, maybe grab a little cover, take out your Cyclops, and then we're going to go. The thing to know about the Arctrician buff, if you're fast enough, theoretically, you can keep the buff going. It's a little harder in this one, so I wouldn't advise like trying to rush it too much. But if you can actually keep like hitting the little like nodes along the path of the electricity, you actually increase the length of your buff. So if you're good enough, you almost need to just get the buff one time. There's a lot of chaos in here, so I'm probably going to go a little slower. But when we're done, I'm going to actually trace each one of the paths for you when the chaos is over. Now, the one thing I will tell you, I'm not going to activate the final four until I'm ready with all four of them. 
because each time you activate a complete circuit, like from start and you finish it, you're going to spawn sp supplicants. If you do all four at the same time, everything despawns, so it makes life a little easier. So, we're going to go find our little dude who's hiding. Maybe I can wake him up. Or he's going to just come up here a little closer. All right. Let him wake up. Cyclops down. Cyclops down. Now you're gonna have goblins, you're gonna have hydras, and you're gonna have some minotaurs. Now there are two minotaurs that are usually gonna be around. There's number two. And this is why Osteostriga is nice. The poison is just gonna help you get some easy kills. Because if the poison kills one, it'll probably kill some of the others. the back Cyclops. Should be dead soon. All right, grab your buff, and we're going to start on the front left closing ending node. So we're going to go inside this building, and we're going to go to the starting point, which is in the back. So that first building on the lower floor doesn't have anything. And you'll always notice those little arrows are the starting points. I'll try and point one out better because they're not obvious. So this one you can do basically all inside. So you're going to follow the wire over here. Then you're going to follow the wire over here. And then the final point is basically the one at the closing point. So I'm done with that one. So then I'm going to go across. Now this one is on the interior, but it's actually down below the ground a little bit. So I don't know if I'm going to have time to do this, but this is why I'm saying you can keep the buff if you're fast enough. So I got that one, come up here, I got this one, got this one, this one, and then I got one more on the outside. Now that Cyclops is up, so you want to be a little cautious. So I've prepped the two bottom ones are done, actually. So if I want to be on the safe side, I can actually work on taking him down, make sure Cyclops are down. sure I've got the other one up above. I've still got 30 seconds because the buff is still pretty fresh. And you got four, that force, that Cyclops in the back is a little painful. Come on, dude. It's a lot of guys coming at you. Now again, if it gets a little overwhelming, I'm not being the most efficient right now, but those guys hurt. So every so often, take a set, second and gather yourself. It's going to be okay. Osteostriga doing the killing for me. Maybe I can get the corner back here. Alright, we're good there. Now I just need a new spawn. Alright, we need a new Minotaur. Seems like they do spawn in generally the same place. Alright, so I got my buff. So I got the two lower ones. So now we're going to do the two top ones. So this is going to be the left side. We're going to go one, two. You can actually shoot him from the side. It still counts. You're going to drop underneath. Three. You're going to go in here is four. And then five. So that one's basically prepped. Again, I haven't closed any of them. That way I don't spawn supplicants. We're going to go one. So this is the one on the, this is the back, this is the other complete circuit. So it's that one, two. And then, come around the corner, three. Now, all four of them are done and ready. So I can literally just go for the complete finish from here. One, two, three, four. And if that's everything, everything will despawn. Be careful about the last, like, chance. Notice all the things spawning and then despawning. It's a lot of stuff that spawns and despawns, but you're done. So now I'm going to trace the paths so you guys can actually see them as they're lit up. The wires are easier to spot so you know what to look for, and then we'll move forward. Okay, so as I said, if you're going front right closing node, it starts interior. So this is the one inside. So you're going to run in this right building, jump down a couple layers, and there's the starting point. You're going to come up. Here's two. Around this corner, you've got three back there. Wire comes up here is four. And then the fifth one is going to be right out here. 
Again, save everything, in the, and that's your last one you do before you do all four. So that's like the prep. So that's the prep for the building right. Inside building on the left is the one we go all the way deep in the tunnel. So way back here is where you start it. And when I say arrows, if you ever want to be sure, this is the starting point. Anything with the arrow says, hey, the current's flowing that direction. So you start it here, and this is the one you can stay in the building and prep the entire time. So the wire goes all the way through here. It's just a little longer run. So you've got this one over here, and then it runs outside the building, but then it comes back in and goes over here. And this one is prepped. So you're done with your prep on the lower level. So then upper floor. So you're gonna do, I would do the left side first if you're back here. So for the upper one, we're gonna come up here. Starting point. There's your next node. Now this is the one where you drop down, catch the one underneath right here. That's your third one. Come back up. This is your fourth. And this is your fifth right here. And that side is gonna be prepped. And then the last one actually starts at the back. So the starting point for the upper right one is here. Then you're gonna go all the way up and over and you just kind of use these buildings for a little bit of cover. Your second node is gonna be right there. Third node is gonna be in this building. Now, once you've hit all of those nodes and you've actually prepped them all, so kind of as I did before, if you want, you can just come here and then just go one, two, three, four while you have the buff and you can close all four circuits together and that'll also stop the supplicants from spawning and kind of saves you a little bit of anxiety with all those guys that want to explode and kill you, especially, especially if you're going for a flawless run. So that is the opening encounter. There's no loot from this section, but it's the opening entrance. And now we're going to go down in. Now, if you're good with a sword to slow down your momentum, that's fine. But honestly, one thing I have found is if you just catch some of these walls, you can actually slow yourself down that way. Everybody's going to have a preference in how they get down this thing. You'll probably have pl plenty of chances to practice it. But... However you feel comfortable getting down here, do what works for you. For me, this is just kind of easy. Don't have to switch weapons or anything, and we're good. So once you get in here, you're going to have some Osiris dialogue. The first collectible is actually in this room. The exit is up there to the left, but the first collectible is actually over here to the right. So all you do is go ahead, uh, collect it on screen. It's going to be some dialogue from Aramis. I would listen to it. Kind of cool concept, and we'll move on. So that is collectible number one in here. Now we're going to proceed forward. Have been scarring research logs. They were looking for right, so once we exit this area, we're going to run this direction. And this is just going to be a little bit of traversal. There's not much you... I know where all the secret chests are, so you're not going to miss anything. So just follow the path. Pretty easy. Nothing dramatic in here. Hopping on over. Second red one, you're going to come down. Literally fall straight down, turn to your left, and your second collectible voice message is right here. So this will be number two. And if you ever want to check just to make sure you're getting them in order, you can check your Triumph, Seal of the Watcher, and they will actually populate like top to bottom as long as you're getting them in order. So keep that in mind. In case you miss one, then you'll know. So this next area we've got is the big open room. Now, sadly, we don't get to interact with the big wyvern guy in that tunnel. He just gets to hang out over there. My advice is... Bring something ranged, which I probably said in the beginning, but bring something ranged just for this room. Mainly because things are far away. So I bring a bow, scout rifle, something at that range though, because you got a lot of harpies floating out in the middle of nothing that you gotta kill. So I would just advise making it easier on yourself with something like this. So we're gonna climb up. First thing you're gonna find is probably a couple hobgoblins, depending on where they're hanging out. go. All right, once you jump forward, you're going to spawn a lot of ads, so I would probably just kind of hang out here and pick them off. I guess in theory, that actually might be the final boss over there. Chat was actually saying it could be, and I guess by looking at it, it is. We don't interact. We don't get to go in the tunnel, but you do run into that guy later. He's the final boss, and you'll see how fun he is. So there's the other annoying part, why you want something with range, and Linears will help you in here. Does look like him, so. Quick couple shots will work. Couple snipes. I'm trying to hit a grenade just because it's fun to hit the grenade down there. 
open sesame. Okay, so that's your first set of ads. We're gonna go ahead and drop down. If you're not a fan of jumping areas, my advice, go put on whatever's gonna help you with jumping. I've got boots that are gonna add a little bit of mobility, so I'm gonna do that for now. Um, and even change one mod over. Since you're not on master, you can do this. If you're worried about it, then, you know, go throw on something like, you know, your stompies or whatever. Whatever works for you to be comfortable jumping, that's your preference. Now, when you get to about this point, you're going to have some ads that spawn. You can honestly sit right here and just pick all of them off. Just don't move. Biggest thing I can tell you is don't move because you don't want to walk off the ledge. You can work most of these ads down from here. Wherever you feel it's comfortable, but they spawn at this point. So if you're worried about it, kill them from far away. They're not like lethal, but they're there. Now this one's always weird because I've like stubbed my toe jumping up here. So I kind of like jumping up on this little corner and then going to the next one. Just because I flubbed that once, I just try and be cautious if I'm going for a flawless run. Glide in and basically jump into this wall. This one is probably going to mess some people up. We're trying to get in here. Then we're going to go up. And up, and up. Now you're gonna have some ad. You're gonna have a lot of ads to kill here, so just get cozy for a little bit, and then we're gonna backtrack around that corner so we can go grab some of the secret stuff. Okay, so from here, we're going to backtrack, grab a collectible in our first kind of hidden bonus chest. So this is going to be collectible number three right here. I've listened to them already, but collect that one and you're good. And then keep coming back here and you can see that little ledge out there. That's going to be bonus chest number one. Now, I've already opened it, so I'm not going to get anything from it, but you'll get it once each week. You can get loot from it. Usually the bonus chests tend to contain something you've already got from the dungeon. So you're like, hey, am I going to get something new? Probably not that time. Jump out here, grab your little bonus thing, and then come back here. And granted, if you wanted to like, you know, you get to the end and you want to come down there and go through the puzzle, you can. But I would rather retreat back that way. It's easier. So from here, you can go upper or lower. It doesn't really matter. I like to go upper here, mostly just because... Gives me a view of that. That's going to be your fourth collectible. And also, usually you got to make this jump across anyway. So, just take the height. Now, I will tell you, these little rafters here, these will not catch you. You will fall straight through this stuff. Make sure you land on solid platform. So, over here, you're going to want to jump out. And then land down here. Apparently, the Hydra wanted to switch sides. Normally, he's literally on the other side. But he felt like getting a little crazy today. So come over, whatever side. If he's on the side I'm on right now, if the Hydra's over here, then just kill the goblin, or kill the harpies over there. If he's on the side that he was on, where you spawn in, or where you land, that gets to be a little spicier. How? How does that not hurt you? Come on. There you go. All right, so that's kind of your last little fear there. Don't really need the bow anymore, so you can switch back to what you were using. And we're going to go over here and grab our fourth collectible. Not a huge platform to aim for, but it's there. So this is number four. Turn back around. Make sure you don't catch that wall. Get a nice little gliding jump out here. And then check your gear. You are done with basically most of the jumping section. You want to make sure you've got survival on. So make sure and switch your gear back. Check your stats. And I'm going to actually flip uh, one of my nodes. Sorry. Too much resilience on that one. So back to grenade. All right. So we're good. Now we go up in the lift. So you should be four collectibles in so far. Yeah, I mean, if you want to use like line rampant, stompies, warlocks get to float. I feel like you guys shouldn't have too much struggle with that one. Um, you get to float and kind of get your direction. So you should be okay in there. So in here, you're going to have a lot of monitors, but you can skip them because I'll show you which ones are the important heaven. ones. Could it be linked to my visions? Why else would the witness be interested in these files? Osiris is having some mental struggles right now, trying to deal with some things. And... 
All right, that is not a window. You can walk and trip and fall outside. Now you can look down, which is kind of cool. And you can see where we were was over there. That's where we started. And that's kind of like the path where we were. So seeing the start and beginning, and we're gonna climb this puppy now. So you can grab your rally flag if you need it. Uh, but we're also going to grab the fifth collectible, which is right here. Screen looks a little funky right now. Normally it's a bit bluer, but that is the fifth collectible. So make sure you grab that. And then we're gonna work our way up. Now this is gonna be kind of your first real encounter. This is like a three level climb. Same thing we're gonna be doing is connecting wires. Sometimes they get to be in some funky spots. So if you head off to the right, you're gonna have the starting platform where the Minotaur is gonna be, I think, or he's off to the left. No, I think he's actually to the left, so this works. And these things are going to be all over the place. Same principle. We're going to kill the Minotaur, get a buff, and then when you close the circuit, you're going to uh, basically probably spawn some supplicants. So, same principle applies. Both circuits are generally right next to each other when they get closed. So don't close a circuit until the very end, because when you have the buff, you can get the final circuit closed next to each other. The thing about circuits is, as long as you hit them in order, like if I get this far and I run out of buff, this will stay lit and occupied and the, the line will stay blue. And then when I finally come back with the buff, I can get to the next step. So you don't have to like force and make sure you do everything at once. Once you've got one proc'd, you're good. So this is the final section. So just don't do the final close and just do the closes together. So we're gonna go grab our buff, which is gonna start with a Minotaur. And again, there's basically, most of these up here are kind of symmetrical. They're not perfect, but they're pretty close. All right, so he's dead. Apparently he wants to give me an engram. Now both starts are right here. You can see the arrows. I'm gonna hit this one just cause I know I can here. And then I'm gonna go to this side over here. I go, know I got a lot of ads over there. So I've got this one stuck in. I also know this one is tucked up above. So follow the wire there. This one is hidden underneath. This one travels down. And that is the second to last one. So don't finish the circuit. We're gonna wrap around and keep our work going. We're just gonna start this side. Now you may have another Minotaur around here, so be aware that he's gonna be there. Now that's the second wire for this side since I got the one from the opening. Now you gotta make sure you grab, there's one underneath. This one you gotta kinda look down here for. I got two Hydras going after me right now, which is a little insane. I'm gonna pop a wall, invisible, well, whatever you can do. The next one should be under there. Tucked around the corner. And then finally, you should be able to close them both together. There you go. Anti-grav lift is ready, and you can save yourself the supplicants, which those are the guys who explode. You're going to see them plenty in the final room. You may as well skip them if you can. Now, my Arctrician buff is just running out, so I'm going to have to work on getting it again. Nothing you can really do about it. All right, so now we got to go find our guys. All right, so you can see both starts are here, so you may as well initiate both of these. And then we're gonna follow this. So this one goes up, way up in that tower, by the way. So you gotta hit up in there, make sure it procs, you can see the blue wire, hop over, get the one underneath, come back, you're gonna grab this one on the wall. And then inside, and that's the second to last one because the finish is on the other side. So now we can go actually hit the other side. Still got 30 seconds since I'm being active on the buff. Again, the wires will kill you, so be careful. It's safer to jump out here. So again, you're gonna look for the starting point. So that's point number two. This one is gonna be tucked up underneath here, actually. And then this one is gonna wrap around if I don't get exploded first. I'm missing one in between. Oh, I'm missing the one down below. No, literally right here on this wall. Ow, really guys? That's a bit harsh. 
All right, so that's the second to last one. And then you can complete both circuits together out here as long as I don't die. One, oh my God. One, two. Get in the lift and go. <laughs> if you want to take a second and kill the, the Hydras, you can. Because they are really annoying, but they just keep spawning. Now, I've still got my buff up, but I'm just going to kill him. And I started this one. So this is the starting point here. So, and you're going to follow this stuff all the way around. So, this one is going to go down underneath here. And this gets to be basically a mirror. So, get used to what you're looking at here. And again, I got a little aggressive here. Probably should have killed some of these ads first. So, you got that wire. And then you're going to follow it up, tucked in this corner. Up here. And then this one is going to wrap around. This is the starting one, so you can go ahead and get that early start. That's going to keep your Arctrician buff on you. That one wraps all the way around, and then you're going to have the final point over there. So save that one, so you do the finals together. We're going to follow this one underneath again, just like before. You're going to have the buff down here, or the node down here. You're going to follow the wire. Again, it goes up to this upper level. Grab it there. You can follow in the wire around. It's going to be up in the corner. And then we can finish both of these at the same time. And this will be the first encounter done. So one and two. And that's a wrap. Everything will despawn. And that's your first encounter with loot, actually. So I got another pair of boots. I've got a lot of boots this time. Maybe one of these is going to be a good stat roll. Well, I've had worse. So that's there. So that is your first encounter basically done. And there's not really a great way for me to show you where each of those nodes are. My best is just to show you how those runs go in live, like a live running. But basically, no, generally they're going to be um, pretty symmetrical. Sometimes they're going to be tucked below. Sometimes they're going to be, you need like a different angle, like over here. And you need to like look under something. Really try and follow the wires as you go through, because I know that went a little bit fast, but... It's not really a way for me to go back and trace those. But for saving the supplicants, close both circuits of each layer at the same time. Save yourself a little pain. We're going to get the final collectible. Right up in here. So when you come up, literally just kind of do a 180 around this pillar. And you're going to go find the sixth collectible right here. And you will be done. So that is all six collectibles. And that's going to get you a higher chance of getting the exotic bow to drop. Then when you're ready to leave this area, we're pretty much going straight to the first major real boss fight. So, not a lot of downtime now. The early travels are over. So if you're not a fan of heights, this is going to be probably a rough encounter. We're going to jump up, make sure you got nothing over your head. Jump up again. And I'm going to try and do my best to explain this boss fight before we start it. Same principle if you got electric nodes. They all start on the middle. So you're going to have, you know, minotaurs and adds that spawn on usually two ends, usually like say over there and over there, and then might be over here and over there. Usually what I'll do, clear out a set of ads, grab the Arctrician buff, and then I will usually initiate all four beginnings. The main reason is that means I don't have to worry about the big center platform again for a while. From here, if you are on a staircase, the one to your direct right, your closest one to the right, is the one that connects to your, you know, spire. So... All of these are going to be similar, except one, and it's number three. So for number one, for example, you'll notice first the wire's right there, then it travels down here, and there's usually going to be one underneath, whether it's under here, down here, tucked in here. That's usually going to be where the first one is. And then from here, it's just tracing the line out. So for number one, it's right here. And then I'll usually backtrack. You can actually shoot this one from here as you come up. Now you don't have to go over. You can actually run underneath. You can shoot that one. And then that will close the circuit. And I'll show, give, show you guys the pathing for each one of these. So for number two, you're going to come underneath. It's on the wall. This one, I usually like to get out a little farther because you'll turn around and it's way out there. And then you can hit that one. And then I usually come back to the staircase and come up. And you'll get a feel. You'll do these enough. You'll figure out where they're at. And then once I've hit the one underneath, I'm going to hit that one. 
And then you're gonna close the circuit. This one's not that dramatic. Number three is what I call easy mode. And if you go kind of in the same order, order each time, you'll figure out what I mean. So this one starts right here, but you never have to go underneath. It literally goes under here. You're gonna go up and over this one right here. Back underneath, one, two. And then your final circuit is gonna be right up top. Now, when you've closed three out of the four circuits, you do wanna make sure you're good on your heavy ammo because then you're gonna be getting ready for your DPS phase. So the fourth one, again, from top level, gonna be down here. This one is tucked in the building here. Then you're gonna come out here to the side. You can tag these from the side. Remember that, you can still proc them from outside. So you got the one outside there. And then we're gonna grab the one on the outside hanging out here. And then this one will be the finish. Now, at this point, the boss is gonna come slowly moseying over to you, and he's gonna have a whole bunch of red eyes that spawn. If you ever did Garden of Salvation, this is that boss. Whole bunch of red eyes, you gotta kill him before he gets all angry and kills you. Once you pop all the red eyes, he's gonna kind of show his center crit point, and then you DPS as far as possible. Now, if you chase him down to the middle, he's gonna do a blast and he's gonna send you backwards. So if you are facing him in the middle, you better make sure you are lined up dead center, because if he launches you backwards, you better hope you stay on the platform. If he launches you sideways and you're doing a solo flawless, bye. Me, I'm staying damn near all the way in the back and I'm just using a linear fusion rifle. That's why. Now, throughout this fight, as I said, you're gonna have some Minotaurs and some goblins that spawn. There are also like roaming harpies. They are just there. Now, I don't know if those come from like closing circuits, but you have to close everyone because you just have to do it. Roaming harpies are gonna be out there every so often. If they just get to be annoying, stop and kill them. This is also the one encounter where I'm gonna tell you to switch to double void because you're not to worry about too much at proximity, but the void stuff is the stuff that's probably gonna hurt the most. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the crappy armor. So I'm gonna show you guys probably one, maybe two damage phases, and then I'm gonna cut towards the finish because once you get the cycle, it's just rinse and repeat. So all you gotta do is uh, shoot the guy he's holding figure out where the ads are gonna spawn and he's gonna be following you around but don't worry too much about him he's really not that dramatic of a thing to deal with and he's just gonna be the first buff I pick up and this is why I said he's gonna be hitting you but if you're in some cover he's not so bad try and clear out some of these ads on the upper deck Now, you don't have to clear him out, but if he's getting annoying, you may as well just, you know, clean up the upper deck for a minute here. All right, so now I'm going to start all four. One, two, three, four. Everything's initiated, and I'm just going to go opposite him. And it doesn't matter which one you start with. You can see the number, so I'm on number one, so I'm actually going to do these in order, which works. So number one, under here. Jump over to the platform. Turn around, make sure you get the middle one. Or the sub, the sub-level one. We're gonna come on up, and make sure we got our ads going down. So then from here, you've got this one to proc. You got your left side. And then we're gonna close the first circuit. And I tend to just go in a clockwise order around this thing. Because then I know it's like, okay, number two. Same thing, I've got one underneath. I've got one over here. I've got the one underneath the catwalk area, and then I've got to get vertical again. Now I'm starting to see a decent amount of hydra harpies out there, so I'm going to try and focus those down for a little bit here. So again, I still got 20 seconds on the buff, so that's my next connection here. And then I'm going to close this circuit. I got some adds up here, so I'm going to try and take him out. It's also going to refresh my buff. Now you see why void is a thing with all these crazy guys coming at me? ridiculous sometimes, I swear. And now we're at number three. Now number three has nothing underneath. That's always what I call easy mode. So you got that one. And you got the one where you literally come right up over the top. These two are right next to each other. If I got ads coming in, I'm actually gonna try and clear them out pretty quick. And then we're going to close this circuit. Again, you can use the interiors for your runs. Give yourself a little bit of cover. I'm going 
gonna reload now all the harpies being really annoying I'm just gonna focus these down. I know I've got a minotaur right above me for my final section So I'm just gonna work on that so I can get my buff I love the teleporting these guys do. It's just really fantastic. I gotta be honest. All right, so final buff, final section. Now this is four, so I've gotta go underneath again to start. Four has the one tucked right over here. Then you've got the outside wall. Then I'm gonna go vertical. I'm looking for adds. If I can get some adds killed, that'll help me get some extra ammo and osteo. And the reason I use osteo is this right here, the poison. Loads me up with like 90 bullets. That's my second to last circuit. And then I'm gonna close this one and boss is gonna come to me. So now, if you got anything on this platform, that is when I would kill it. But I'm gonna pop my bubble and make sure he comes my way. I have unfortunate timing of I need to reload my breech load grenade launcher and also kill this pain in the ass in my eyeballs here. All right, so now we're gonna go and just crit him the whole way out. Focus Fury is on, so I'm gonna get some big numbers. If I don't get line of sighted by the ads, you stupid, stupid ads, oh my God. Well, not my best DPS, cause I cannot believe all the ads felt like charging me out here, but that's a DPS phase. So I'm gonna do one more, see if I can get a little more optimal DPS, cause I didn't even go through like half my heavy ammo, thanks to just all of the utter poor chaos that happens, but it's really just an endurance fight. All of this is really manageable once you get comfortable with what you're dealing with. It just takes some time to put it all together. So again, get your middle circuit, line up all four, and then again, start the cycle again. Once you get comfortable doing all this, it's really not too bad. And this is number three, so this is easy mode. So I got underneath, up over the top, one and two. I think it does cap at about 45 seconds, by the way. So you can't get much more than that for a buff. And then the last one is up on the top. So that circuit's closed. Make sure he doesn't swipe you off the top there. Those ads, yeah, they sacrifice themselves for their boss. I was like, that's that was crazy. I have not seen ads do that almost ever. So. Good to show you guys an odd experience. May as well show you guys what it is unoptimal. So again, you got the one on the outside. Other one's gonna be out here. Got some harpies that are gonna be annoying. Trying to take those out if I can, and then complete this circuit. Now, the number of lasers coming at me right now seems a little ridiculous, so this is why sometimes I just stop and I kill the harpies, because this just sucks. Oh, big guy up top kind of stings, though. And this is why maybe I'm cheating with an overshield. It's probably something you guys will throw at me, but... It's what I got for abilities, so I'm working with them. But again, using cover like this underneath will probably work as well. He's just really annoying. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fast enough to be able to keep this thing with, like, five seconds, but I'm going to try. See if I can actually manage not needing another buff. Five seconds left and I can close this circuit. Now I am gonna need some heavy ammo before I really finish this up. I need to reload that grenade launcher before the boss fight so I'm not in stupid situation there. More Harpies of Doom. Again, if you feel like you're just getting like lined up, try and find a little cover, if possible. Seems to be a little crazy, but your best cover, if you're just dealing with ads, is probably going to be really underneath. Pick one of these where you know you got to start it anyway. Now, I'm out of my buff, so I got to go find it again, which is fine. But gives me a chance to kind of recover. Alright, so we're going to grab the buff. Looks like I've got another angry minotaur. Kill him as well. There we go. Things are dead. And I think the Harpy is responding when you're closing a circuit, by the way. So that's probably what's doing it. I think timing-wise it makes sense. So if you feel like there's a point you just need to take a break, take a little break, break clear everything out, and it's not going to happen again until you get to the next circuit. So we're good. 
I've got my adds. I don't have a ton of ammo, so I would probably like to actually have a little more right now. So I'm gonna farm adds for ammo, because I do want my damage phases to count, and I wanna show you guys a good one. So hopefully ammo doesn't take like six years to get, if I can help it, because believe me, I have had some bad ammo runs. Unlucky ammo, that's gotta be like my nickname, I swear, for some of these dungeons where you're trying to do a solo flawless and you're like, oh, I want a good damage phase. Can't buy ammo to save my life. I can get orbs for days, but ammo, less so. Not much you can do besides farm. You'd think at some point it's just like, hey, you've killed enough enemies, you're bound to get some ammo. Maybe not, though. Oh, he just really wanted to come give me a hug, huh? Wow. Well, I'm charged with, charged with light constantly, which is not a bad thing, but... Way to juke my grenade. Quite impressive. Enjoy my grenade. Round two. Alright. Well, I'll leave this in here just so you guys know you're not the only ones who are missing heavy ammo. Because, man, sometimes it is feast or famine. I will tell you. Doing the, solo, the final boss, it is definitely a whole lot of feast or famine on heavy ammo. And I try and switch. I try and use my grenade launcher. I try and use other weapons. Doesn't seem to matter. Just give me heavy. So much to ask. Because that's all I want is a decent damage phase. Seems reasonable to ask, right? Can't get one without heavy ammo, though. No, maybe? Okay, may try to melee kill. Still no heavy. This is one of the things I wish they would look at. Because the, the inconsistency in heavy ammo drops, especially as a solo player. Oh man, it's rough. I have special ammo for literally days. And no beneficial ammo. So the quest continues. No? Like one brick and I'd probably give the damage run a go. Well, I'm probably gonna end up cutting this out because this feels way too long. This is ridiculous though. How many ads does one need to kill? Just try and get one heavy ammo break to drop. I'm charged with light constantly, so everything's just dying a little bit faaster every time, but. Got enough explosions, he'll probably die. This is crazy though. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Like Seinfeld, no, no heavy for you. Far enough back there? Hoping to dodge me? That's ridiculous. Excuse you, big guy. Nope. Well, now this is just turning into a meme. Let I swear I just need to I need to put a timer on this video just to see how long it takes for actual ammo to show up. That would almost be depressing and hilarious at the same time. I saw a brick. I actually saw a real brick. Holy crap, they do exist. And then it'll be Feast or Famine, where you get like zero and then you get like four. It's like I don't mind getting the ammo, but why do you have to do it in chunks like that? Alright, I'm at 16 shots. If I get all 16 shots off, then we'll see if I could have needed more. But I'm gonna go close the circuit now, which is which side over there. Got some ads on the way. Circuit is ready to close too. I'm going to make sure my grenade launcher is also done. Alright, let's close it up. Bubble is definitely ready. Now, he is closer, so I don't have nearly as long. Go for the eyes.
better DPS. Still not perfect. I missed a shot in the middle, but yeah, still pretty solid. If I wouldn't have had to reload, that would have been better. So that is a couple damage phases so you guys can see how it works. I'm going to finish this thing up, and then I'll catch you guys when it's finally done. Oh, look, heavy ammo. <laughs> Feast or famine, I am telling you. All right, I'll see you guys towards the end of the fight. All right, everybody, we are on the last damage phase. All harpies are down. It does seem every time you close a circuit, you're going to have harpies. So usually in about the third one, it's probably a good time to close. Where are you going? I'm not done. Never mind. Well, okay. Um, every time you close the circuit, it does seem to spawn harpies. So that's learning to be a consistent thing. When you close three circuits, there are a lot of harpies around. So my advice, honestly, is when you close three of them or even two... Find the harpies, track them down, and kill them. Because if there's about eight laser beams on you at the same time, it gets to be really just a bit too much. So I'm going to get my last buff here. He's low enough, even though I've only got eight bricks of heavy. I should be able to finish him up here if I can help it. That'll work. The wire's coming down. Last circuit here. See if I have any ads greeting me all over the place, which I do. Don't need those making my life fun when it comes to doing damage to the boss. Where's my last proc? Making some bonus ammo. Perfect. Thank you, guys. And now we'll do it. Oh, there's one early. Now I don't have my super, though, but I guess we'll see what it's like without it. Now we're just doing normal damage boost. That is why Osteostriga is so good. Oh, I forgot one. All right, now you should die. <laughs> yep. All right, and that is a wrap. So once you get your rotation down, it's really not too bad. And I ended up starting to follow him up to about halfway up the walkway for DPS, and then he blasted me back. Don't jump when he blasts you backwards, but as long as you're kind of in line, the worst that's going to happen, you're going to bump into this or you're going to bump into the circuit. So I would follow him up for your DPS section. I usually basically kind of pick one of these lines that doesn't have a hole in it. So while I'm doing ADS, I slowly move up like this and I'm getting damage. And then when he blows me backwards, it's generally straight backwards. So it's been kind of okay on that front. So yeah, watch for the harpies two to three circuits in. Make sure you clear them out so it's not chaotic. And then we'll go from there. Let's see if I got anything good. We got some gauntlets. I still do not have my cowboy hat. Kind of missing, wishing I had a cowboy hat. Neither of these are great rolls, so there's that. Clear up some blues from the inventory. And now down we go. So we already got all the collectibles. There's nothing new. The secret chest is kind of just before the final boss. So we're going to work our way down at this point. Still same weapons literally until the final boss room. Always just catching the falls here. That door... Got a crouch to go through this one. All right, so when you fall here, you're going to have a few adds. A couple of hobgoblins over there. It's kind of nice to explode them. You're basically going to have to kill these guys twice because you've got to clear the room. Then you got to clear the room again after the, the uh, Minotaur spawns. So what you want to do is on the first level is find where you're going to be shooting. So you've got one... Okay, no, actually, he's over here. There's usually a better angle for this one. I gotta find my. There's five on each one. So you've got. Oh, there it is. One, two, three, four, and then five is underneath back there. These, these are not too hard to find, honestly. Minotaur is coming up. More ads down below, no big deal. Don't wait too long to make sure you can actually get the buff. And then again, just come back and find a good angle over here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, and five. When that happens, the bottom floor is gonna open up. Clear your ads before you go down. It's kind of why I like the weapons I have for just clearing out ads. They're quite good at it. Also watch the fanatics if you're on a solo flawless run. Those will tend to want to explode. Kind of ruin your day a little bit. Now, when it comes to a solo flawless run, this is one of the parts that's probably gonna mess up a lot of people. I promise you. I will also probably have one of these moments. So the best thing I can tell you is, one, don't jump. Two, you wanna go with the direction of the fan towards the platform. So, go with it. Right when it passes, fall with it. Same, now this one you gotta catch yourself and land on the center. So go at the same time and then catch yourself on the center platform and then come over. They don't seem as bad as previous fan things, so they're not as dramatic as they could be. Definitely got some verticality in this room. But you can hang out up here if you got some range. We must secure the complex to convince Ikora. Trust is a frail thing. Yep, see somebody in my chat? A fan killed their solo flawless first run. Fans will ruin your day, and if it's your solo flawless death, then I am sorry, but you will not be the only one it happens to, I promise. Didn't actually know I could land on that level. That's interesting. Alright, so basically it's trying to figure out where he's going to spawn. Uh, Minotaur is going to spawn right there, so just trying to get positioning. And then before I kill everything, it's just trying to find your five shots. So one is way up there. Two is over there. Three is going to be up there. Four is there. And then five is right there. So usually if you stand right here, you'll get most of them. One, two, three, four. And then come over here for five. Try and kill the hobgoblins first if they play nice. And then get the minotaur last. As soon as he dies, you want to be able to pick up the buff. So it's nice just to be able to kill him and then get the buff pretty quick. I will typically pick up the buff and then come back to where I was just so I know I've got the same line of sight that I did before. All right, so one, two, way up high, three, four, five. That railing actually works pretty well, so you can peek over and see that one. Osteostriga, not what I thought I'd be using in here, but after testing it, it's been very beneficial in quite a few places. Oh, there'd be a fanatic waiting to ruin your day. If he explodes and kill you, but trust me, it's happened to me already too. All right, fans round two, a little bit harder this time. Crouch run, now this one's a little different. Because if you're looking for the platform, it's right there. So if you try and go with the fan blade, wait for it to be on like the right side of your screen. Pass over, down. Same thing, go with the direction of the blades. And then catch your fall. And then right here. Now I'm not saying on my flawless run they won't ruin me, but so far they haven't been too bad. What's actually probably going to kill me is this room. Now, when you land in here, be careful of the electricity coming through. Those will insta-kill you. Now, there is one... Uh, there is one switch in there that you need to be able to hit, so keep that in mind. Big guy's dead in the middle. So you got four switches on the exterior. Kind of like we have before. But you're going to have one on the inside, and i got to figure out which angle it comes from. Because on this one, the ads are just going to keep coming, so it's kind of nice just to be able to get your buff and then start shooting the sides. So it's one, two, three, four. Oh, 
Where is it? 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 I, w I took too long. There it is. Okay. So it's this side, Al. Alright, so one, two. Behind him, if I can hit it. Oh, I did actually hit it. So that's three, four. And then go for it, because you'll despawn the adds. Oh, come on. Okay, kind of panicking here. A little, uh, it's not going well. Fly in this room, it's like you almost want to hit the center first to find your angle and then hit the rest because then you know that you're good. So, yeah, make sure you find that center angle and then you should be able to get the rest. There we go. Now, he should despawn. I just was doing that for safety. Okay. One of these you're going to be able to drop down in, which is this one. So if you literally turn around and then go to the opposite staircase, you can go under one of these for your second bonus chest. This is not it. I had my timing wrong. Sorry. So if you can drop down here, then it's to your right. I know. I was like, I know it's one off. There you go. You'll see the red. If you drop down and crouch, the chest almost takes up the whole viewing angle here. And that is your second bonus chest. Again, I've already opened it since I'm making the guide, but that's where you get it. Climbing out actually isn't too bad. You'll get up. Now, if you're looking for an angle just to be able to find the inside, there's not a great way to tell you. But what you are looking for is just trying to find that angle where you can see it. Now, if you've got a flawless run and you got an engram in there... Jumping over the electric wires is probably not the most ideal. It's here. So I don't have a great point of reference since the room is the, a square, but it is on one of these little pillars. So if you just get to a point where you can see it, go for that one first, and then the other four around, you know, it's like go one, two, start moving with three, get around the room with four, and then you should be able to get enough timing with five. And also, this is not a hit scan weapon. So you could actually probably do it better with a different weapon. If you're not using Osteostriga, anything even like a funnel web in here would probably be fine. Alright, so you got the secret chest. Because you got to find the one that, like, some of them look like that. This is the one you drop down. Remember, the secret chest is under that staircase right over there. And we're going to drop down, and then we will be in the final boss room. Big drop down here. If I wish there was like lore or something around here. It's just kind of a cool opening. Now, if you don't trust yourself like a titan on a fall, catch it in pieces. <laughs> a vex mind directs power to the reactor. Kill it. And the this is the final boss room. Stable. All right, so let me take a second, and then we're going to explain how this all works. All right, so first thing, now is we're going to change up my loadout. So I've used the same thing the entire way through. Now I'm going to be running Wither Horde for some ad clearing, some Hydra killing, and some DPS bonus. I've got my Funnel Web with Subsistence and Adrenaline Junkie to be able to take out as many ads as possible. I've got my Heavy Weapon. Again, remember, lots of Heavy Weapon options. If you've just crafted a Tarnation and you've got, like, you know, go Enhanced Field Prep, Enhanced Chain Reaction, you're probably going to be just about as good because you'll have more reserves, theoretically. If you have the God Roll Hothead, the Vorpal, the Clown Cartridge, cool. I even had this, like, Code Duello. If you've got a rocket launcher with, say, like, Field Prep, you can crouch and fire faster. If you've got a rocket with Vorpal, which I actually didn't, that actually might do okay as well, alone, just with that one. There's a lot of options. I struggled with the crits on this guy, and when you get to the DPS phase, you'll probably see why. Um, but it's just, it's a Vex Chicken, it's a Vex Wyvern, and it's hard to hit the crit. Uh, Gallahorn's probably like an easy mode, but it did get nerfed recently, so I'm not sure how bad it is in comparison. I haven't tested it, because with, if I did Gallahorn, I couldn't use Wither Horde, and Wither Horde is adding a decent amount of DPS to things. Um, when I have a good, efficient Wither Horde run, I can feel the DPS be a little bit more. The other thing I've done is Void Melee, but I switched the double Void from that previous boss fight back to Melee Resistance, so when things are point-blank range, whether it's a Supplicant Explosion, a Punch, or anything along those lines, it's going to help me stay alive for things that get really up close and personal. And sometimes things are just going to get close and personal whether you want it to or not, to be honest with you. 
So keep that in mind. Everything else is mostly going to be the same. Everything else is kind of working in the similar fashion. Got resilience, high discipline as I can for grenades, all that fun stuff's here. And again, remember, if this was like this much higher, I would be doing more damage, but it's going to take me about eight damage phases. So again, I'm going to show you probably like one or two rotations, like the opening and then another full rotation. And then I'm just going to like basically fast forward and cut ahead to the end of the fight so you guys can see that. Now, in the room, sorry, that's phase one with the loadout. In the room, now you can see you've got red wires. Since we're on the inside, that's kind of how those work. So the way this is going to work, you're going to have hydras. They spawn on the right hand side and the left hand side. They're kind of an early focus to go for. When the hydras go down, that is, and then also after a bit of a timer. So after a timer, it seems, but I also feel like it's when one of the hydras goes down, but I think it's just a timer. That door opens. As soon as this encounter starts and you run to the other room, before you've opened the center door, you can run over there and nothing's going to chase you. Now, I'm not, not saying a supplicant might not be, make a beeline for you and try and get you. Generally, though, they're not going to chase you over there. You have some safety and room to breathe between kind of runs. And then these are these doors are only closed in the opening of the encounter. So if you can just kind of be mobile for long enough for the doors to open, then you can kind of get some safety. But you're going to have a Hydra on each side. One over here, one over there. You're going to have some adds. They could be in the middle or they could be on one of the two sides as well. The adds include supplicants, so they are starting it early. Some goblins and some sub supplicants. So, you know, use your melees, use your hammers for sunspots, use your... Grenades with Vortex. If you're a Warlock, you got big Void Grenades. Use those puppies. Um, start putting Wither Horde on the ground to clear some of those adds out. Once the Hydras are down, then you're going to have the Minotaur spawning in this little area, and then opposite side right over there. They're always going to be spawning in the same spot, and that's how you get your Arctrician buff. Uh, we have red and yellow wires in here, so that's cute. Um, once you get the Arctrician buff the first time of each damage phase, what you're gonna do is hit these. One, two, three, four, and five. What that's gonna do is open the big door. From that point, the boss can roam back and forth between the rooms, so keep that in mind. Also, if you get the buff and then you hit all five of these, you also probably have a good amount of time on Arctrician. Now, it's chaos in here, so I'll show you. But after the big door opens, then you're either gonna have this one and this one, or the other side, or a mix. Basically, you're gonna get two of these four. And then this one or this one. These are your starting circuits that will go to the other room. So say I have this one, and then I have the one on the other side of that pillar. I have to connect the circuit from in here to the other room. When you are going to close the second circuit in the opposite room, you need to make sure the boss is in there. When, that, when you close the second circuit when the boss is in there, it's basically going to close the doors on you. And then you're going to get a chance to close again these five. It's going to close the side doors. Then you got to close these five to close the main door. And then there's like a reactor pulse. The pulse will drop his shield. Then the door opens up and he comes a walk in your direction. And that's when you do damage. Pretty much. So it's a cycle of first the hydras for each damage phase. Then when both hydras are down, minotaurs will spawn. You got to sprint in this room and hopefully you got a little bit of cover. Grab your buff once he's down. And again, you got to open the door. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Open the big door. Then you're going to have one of two sides. And again, it could be this one over here. And it could be the one on the opposite corner. So I'm going to trace these paths for you on this side of the room. And then when I get in the other side of the room, I'll explain where they go. So here we've got the, the back left circuit goes up. Up here on the corner. It comes underneath. The actual little, like, you know, right tucked under where the Minotaur spawns. And then up there in the corner. And then when it gets into the other room, the wires actually cross sides of the room. The close one goes right here and here. And then it crosses to the outside of the room. On the right-hand side of the room, the far one here goes up. And it tucks all the way down in the corner of the spawn point, And then goes up there. And then follows the same side. So the outside wire stays on the outside. The inside wire is probably the most pain in the butt of all four of them. It goes here, here, and then it's got a whole bunch of underneath. So I'm going to try and show you guys, remember, these two are together, those two are crossed, and there's probably going to be some maps out there for how it connects together, but I'll try and show you guys how each of the wires like connect from side to side. But that's half of the path, and then when I get in the other room, I'll show you the other half of the path. But basically, as I said, I'm going to start this out, going to do a full damage phase, going to do a second damage phase so you guys can see what it's like kind of post the first one. 
and then I'll just fast forward until we actually get to the end of this thing. Otherwise, the video would take way, way too long, as usual. All right. Now, you can see the ads are spawning. It looks like they're either spawning middle or the opposite side. So again, I'm using this fun weapon here. Now, the chicken can totally come up at you in here. So you gotta be a little mobile, cause the big guy, the boss will just come running at you. So again, make a loop if you need to. Your goal is the the big hydras. All right, so hydras are down. Looks like he's marching up here. So if I'm gonna go for uh, if I'm gonna go for the buff, I'm gonna try and get it from this side. All right, so I've got my buff, so I've got my five shots. This is usually where I do it from, too. And then the door is open. Now, from here, you can take a second and figure out where everything is at. Things are going to chase you, but over here... Now, the boss can come in here now. So keep that in mind. You're not safe, but this just kind of gives you a little space from all the chaos that's over there. Enemies will start spawning in here, too, now. So keep that in mind. You're not alone. Supplicants can come up behind you just like that. Gets to be a little bit insane. Alright, so I got a fresh buff. Looks like both are actually on this side. Normally it's not this way, but I'll take it. So I'm just going to basically tag everything on this side. And both circuits are going into the other room. I guess I'll just get bopped over here. That's accidental, but I'll take it. Okay, so remember the one that I said was the annoying one? Well, I can't get a good angle on it. It's basically, it's the inside wire right here. It's because it's underneath. One of them's under there. And I got to loop around because he's going to be on me shortly. And again, this is usually what you're going to have to do. To get a shot, you're going to have to pull him into this room and then come back. So again, you got one under there. One tucked right here. Then it's on this side of the wall. And then you'll be able to complete your circuit. Back there is one. Now the other one is much easier. The outside wall one is going to be up on the ceiling. Right down there. I'm almost going to die. Actually almost going to die here. And again, normally that guy's shooting me too. So yeah, things get a little... And this is why I am on the class that I am, but that's my personal preference. So so again, this one, the outer one, once you get everything outside, it's up on the ceiling. It's down below. But I need my Arctrician buff back, so I gotta go grab it. And sometimes it's gonna go just like this. You think you're good, and then you're not. So just take your time and learn the cycle, and you're going to be better off once you do this enough to just be comfortable with it. Boss is still just lighting me up from that side. Alright, so I just need to pull the boss back in here. And then I should be able to get my last two shots. So I've got to get this one down here. And then I gotta close the last circuit. When it closes, he's gotta be in here, remember? And then we're gonna go outside. I also need to make sure I have the Arctrician buff because I've gotta make sure I can still close the big door. So make sure you get your buff. Be terrified of supplicant noises. All right, so the buff is up, so I gotta go one, two, oh my God, three, four. And that's why you have your melee buff on. Pop my bubble. Now I'm doing some DPS. Now I'm crouched because I have field prep, so I've got faster reload while I'm crouched. Now when I go around that corner, I tend to mess with them a little bit back there. It kind of still works. That's about as long as your damage phase and he's immune. That's it. That's your damage phase. That's all you get. So that is why I told you it's going to take a while to do. 
So now, my goal is usually to clear this room out. And you can start working from here. Now, nothing should be really charging in here. You're going to have some ads out there. You're going to have some other stuff. But at this point, Wither Horde is really good on the Hydras because you can hit them on the ground. You can basically shoot through their shield and kind of let it do its work. Let those things go. I have stubbed my toe on these railings. So unless it's just pure chaos, I tend to walk through here. Ask my chat how they know. All right. So now both sides are open. So I know that little that guy is going to land right there. So if I can put both of those on the ground and I can basically kill him quick, I know I can come in here and get my buff and I can work on the wall shots. Try and get all five if I can. Then once it's lit up, I'll usually run back to the other room. Try and cover my tracks with something. Now the boss can come through now, but it takes him a second to do so. That, that just saved my life. But again, there's all different ways that you can make this work. I know my build looks like it may be the only one for some of you people who don't do this normally. But I promise you, okay? So here's the other two. At least I get to show you all the different pathings. So again, remember, that one's on the roof. That one's there. Now he's in the way, so I'm just going to go through the middle. That's why Wither Horde is so good. If you have the catalyst and auto-loading, it's just it's hard to beat it. Now I'm going to go out here because my attrition buff, well, it's probably fine. I need to pull the boss out here anyway because I need some time to go through and do the other stuff. So if I can pull him to, say, the other side. Give me more time to work this. All right, so in here... And again, if you shoot a supplicant, they tend to be a little stuck. All right, so coming through here, you're going to have this one here. Which connects to here and here, which it's out of order, but I always end up shooting them together anyway. And that's the far connection. And then the close one is right about over there. But I want to make sure I have full heavy ammo first. And I think I do have some out somewhere, so I want to go grab it. I'm going to do a bit of a loop. See what my heavy ammo situation is like. Yep, see, I got a brick right here. So I still got plenty of time. I'm just going to rotate around, and then I'm going to go close the last node here. It's so the last node. That's the one on the wall, and I just got to finish it up with that. Sorry, not that one. That one. You got the big buff going. Now, I've got 12 seconds. In theory, I don't need the buff again, but it is nice to just grab it. And then you're looking for these to open up. Like, you know, I usually sit right here. One, two, three, four. And again, you can hit them on the sides. So make sure everything is reloaded and ready. That's it. So once again, doors will close, come back in here for safety, and you rinse and repeat. And again, I would check every spot the ads can be. Sometimes there's enemies up here, sometimes there's ads in the middle, and then sometimes there's ads over on this side as well. And if there's supplicants just roaming around, they can kind of ruin your day. But that's pretty much going to be how it is right now. But again, remember, I'm 1580 weapons, 1592. If I was like 1590 weapons and about 1605 for a power level, would be a much different ballgame. So don't think it's going to be ridiculous forever. When light level changes, it will get better. So I'm going to go through quite a few more damage runs. Um, but it's just the same thing, rinse and repeat over and over. And then once you get comfortable doing it, 
It really is just a cycle of endurance. Now, can things go wrong on an endurance run? 100%. They have for me plenty of times. That's why this is not a flawless run, by the way. But, that being said, I've been basically, you know, stubbing my toe or something stupid from a flawless run. So, I know it's definitely possible. It's just one of those with a little patience, a little practice, I know I can get it done. And again, notice how I hit those while I'm, like, flying through. I'd much rather do those kind of while moving because I do not want to stand still while all that chaos is going on in that room. Now he can come back in here, so remember that. I'm going to finish and then go back. Also why Wither Horde is very good. Because Wither Horde will slow all of this chaos that's coming at you down a little bit. The boss is lighting me up, it gets a little harder. Alright, so I've got both on this side again. So I will see you guys when we get towards the end of the boss fights. Uh, hopefully it's just one take. And uh, obviously we'll wrap things up in the end. Alright everybody, this is basically going to be the last phase. It's got to be. At this low of health, it's got to be the last phase. So, a couple little tidbits as you go. If you're really struggling with heavy ammo, you're not alone. It's like an awful situation in here that I'm kind of dealing with. Um, I will tell you, after the first door is open, doing... Pretty much all of your ad clearing from this side before you go for the Arctrician buff and kind of opening the mid door, you're gonna have waves of ads in here. And that's also a little scary. Um, you're gonna have, <coughs> and it's gonna take a little bit, but if you're going for really cautious, you might wait till more of those ad waves actually go down. Because they come in like two or three waves, and especially once you kill that guy. Um, the Hydra, you'll have a little bit of time and then there's going to be less ads that just keep spawning after a little while. So if you're really struggling with it, a little patience in this part will probably help. Hi. But yeah, I will tell you, like, you can see a little heavy ammo finder break on. I had to throw finder. I had to throw scavenger on. It was atrocious without it. But again, when you're going for these five in the middle, it's a little precarious, don't get me wrong. And also if there's adds down below, like a vortex grenade does wonders down there. And every so often you'll have to do a panic bubble. Can't say I've had to do a lot of those, but that's this close into it, I'm definitely doing that. You also have plenty of time to get your super up, depending on if you're hunting for ammo, so that won't be a big of a deal. If you're in a pinch, use your super. Because you're going to be killing stuff all the time. So you'll generally have a lot of enemies to kill with a primary weapon, which is how you're going to generate a lot of your ammo anyway. And you'll get really comfortable where all these spots are. Excuse me, it's right there. I need to go after this one while I can. Because it's this really annoying one under the stairs. Can I hit it? Yep. Roof. There. I have 10 ammo. I gotta make sure I got a little bit more. Let's praise the sun around here. Yeah, that's probably not wrong. Yeah, there's a little bit of prayer, puckering, hope, and just dreams that make this one happen. See, I got a heavy ammo brick in the middle here, actually, for a change. Watch you just die. I'm gonna go grab that big that brick once chicken comes around here. That should be enough ammo. Hey look, it's trying to just give me ammo because it's like, well you're almost done. We'll give you all you need now. It's pretty much how it's gonna feel. It's feast, famine, nothing in between. Why am I getting lit up so bad? Really you? This this is the guy who wants to ruin my entire party? Doesn't seem very nice. Well, I think I'm good on ammo now. I just need to finish the circuit, which is going to involve... One of these should close. The other one is... Which one do I need to hit? Oh, I need to hit the one over the back. Over the wall there. Alright, let's go finish this thing. 
Are you seriously blocking that? There we go. Make sure my last shield actually counts. Last time. Here we go. Mine's going to be about nine damage phases in case you're wondering. So at my level, about 1582 or 1580 plus, you know, I don't even have my super. I better be able to finish this thing. I used my panic super, so hopefully I have enough damage to do it. Come on, almost there. Damn, there we go. Woo! Oh, all right. And it is done. Even if you're farming this thing, it may not be a pinnacle, but you should get a couple of drops. Ah, I got one of the new, um, I got one of the new grenade launchers. This is a double grenade launcher. I don't know if danger zone's gonna be amazing, but I got one. Extra solar colonies. So, that is a wrap. Let's get back to orbit with, uh, basically a little bit of summation. So that is a wrap on Spire the Watcher. As you can tell, um, I mean, on my damage phases for the final boss, I probably went through, like, nine, I think. So, better than my first run at, like, eleven. A little more efficiency, but it is gonna be definitely an endurance fight. Now, the middle boss, with the right combination of damage stacking, I could probably get him done in, like, four if I was perfect on DPS. Getting a little better at that, but five was reasonable there. And the biggest thing is just finding ways that you can stay alive. Devour was helpful for me. My overshield was helpful for me. That's a Titan subclass build. Invisibility at certain points, if you just go invis and stay alive, cool. But I can also promise you I have died multiple times at very unfortunate timing, late in boss damage. Believe me, there's going to be some frustration while you try this. But my goal here in this one is to explain what weapons I used, why I used them, show you full gameplay, and kind of explain all the mechanics as you went through, and then hopefully showed you all the secrets as well. So if you found this video beneficial, please drop a like below, leave a comment if you want to say hello, and click the link in the description. That'll help for the sponsor of this video. Always appreciate it on these big guides. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to find me over on Twitter or Twitch, it's Ebontis over there. But right here on YouTube, if you enjoyed this one, I've got a lot more videos coming, so please hit that subscribe button and also the alert bell next to it that helps my videos make it to you through youtube thank you all for the support you guys are all amazing and i'll see you in the next one